Hey everyone, welcome to another House Rules Review. My name is Jonathan Dilfer. Today we're going to talk about a game called The Isle of Cats. Now The Isle of Cats is made by Frank West. It was a recent Kickstarter um, that I was able to back and I got the expansion called The Late Arrivals for it as well. Um, with this game, there are a lot of run-throughs already online. Ratto did a great one. Um, Frank West on his City of Games website, the designer, did one as well. Those are all super long. I'm going to try to teach you this game in 15 minutes so that you can know how to play without watching an hour and a half video. If you want all the detail, go check those out. They're amazing. If you want to learn how to play it fast, stick with me here. Hey, so one thing that I forgot to add in, I'm going to add in real quick. In the family version of the game, there are these uh, little lesson cards that unlike the main game where you're drafting, you would basically just start out with a hand of three and then you choose two to keep and then you reveal them at the end of the game when scoring for the family version. So anyway, just forgot to add that in. I'm going to put that in there, and then we'll talk more about the standard game too. Thanks. Stick with me here. So there's two modes that I'm going to go through today. One is the family mode, and then one is the more strategic standard mode. The family mode, um, basically what you're doing is you're grabbing cats that you can see here in front of me by the island, you're placing them on your ship. You can never go outside of the white lines for placement. You can never overlap another cat for placement. Now, in the family mode, all you're doing is each turn, once you determine player order, which I did random here, um, you take a cat, you place it on your ship. You want to try to group cats' families together, so of the same color, because the more you have of the same color, the more points they are worth at the end of the game. If you cover a treasure map, which are located here, here, and here, with the same color cat as the map, you may grab one of the common treasures from this pile. These have no value in the game, but they are great for trying to fill in rooms of the map, which there's a little um, thing in the rule book that shows you where those rooms are. They're also delineated by very small icons on the board. You won't be able to see those in my video, but you do see a shaded little icon in each space of the board that shows where those rooms are. And it's important to fill those because at the end of the game, any rooms that are not completely filled are minus five points. Rats are also important to cover as any rats you don't cover are minus one point each. So again, covering a map, kind of the same color, lets you get a common treasure no value for the game, but they help you fill up spaces that might otherwise be a little bit tricky to fill with cats. In the family mode, you just go back and forth. Everyone gets to grab a cat until either everyone has passed or until there are no more cats to draw from. Now, in the family mode, there aren't any cards. There aren't any baskets. There aren't any fish. Things that you use to pay for cats. Um, in the family mode, you're just drawing cats every round. You have a round tracker. You play five rounds, and then at the end, the game's over, and you score based on filling the rooms, based on your families, which you have to have at least three cats um, in a family together to score. So if you have two yellow cats together, there are not any points. If you have four yellow cats together, there's a chart on the side here on the board. Four cats together are 11 points. You can just follow the scoring mechanism and also the round summary of how to go through and play. The family mode is really simple and, and just broken down really easily. Um, one thing that we did as a house rule um, is we alternated who went first every turn and, and basically shifted that around. Um, and so like the person who was second moved up, person who was first went to the back of the column just to kind of keep it random so that a new person was first every turn. Because in the, in the standard game there is a mechanism for that, but in the family game there isn't. Now differences with the family game versus the standard game is you have rare treasures <clears throat> which you'll get them in the family game but again they have no value there in the standard game they're three points apiece at the end of the game if you can put them on your board you get those and many other things by using cards there are several types of cards I'm going to go over those but there's a drafting round that you're drafting cards before you build your deck there are these lesson cards that actually have a little icon that says A, B, C, D um, on them and you're only supposed to use three modules of lessons in the deck along with the core lessons that come in there. The way I have this set up is for the standard game there is a, a separate side of the board for the family games. So you can see that. 
Um, with the standard game, uh, every turn you're going to start with 20 fish. Now these fish, these bigger ones, are supposed to be five. I know it looks like there's three. There are two shadows behind, so they are five. And then there are single fish. So everyone will start with 20 fish in a permanent basket. When you use a basket, you'll flip it. Then there are baskets on cards. You'll get a hand of cards. Usually it'll be a variety. You'll have seven. You'll draft two and then pass. Draft two and then pass. Draft two and then pass that last card. So you'll have a total of seven cards at the end to pick from. Now cards will be a couple of things. They'll be lessons. For this demonstration, I'm only using the module A lessons. There will be treasure cards. There will be anytime purple cards. And there will be green rescue cards. Now, rescue cards, um, well, let me talk about the cost. Every card's going to have a cost in the upper uh, left corner. That's what you have to pay in fish to hang on to that card. After you're done drafting, you choose which of your seven you're going to keep. The rest you discard. The ones you keep, you pay for. Now, the rescue cards, those determine player order. These boots, whoever has the most boots, goes first. Second, third, fourth, so on. If there's a tie, then what happens is that you, those two players that tied, they'll move up wherever they would move up in line, but they don't remove in relation to each other. Kind of like if you've ever played the game Get Bit, um, which is a little shark game where you can get chased by a shark. But anyway, your, your correlation to the other player doesn't change if you tie. You just both move wherever you would move. You'll have baskets. Some will be half baskets like this. Some will be full baskets. Two half baskets make one full basket. You need one basket per cat you're going to capture or lure onto your boat. Um, as far as uh, lessons, these are always end game bonuses, either for yourself or for everyone at the table. Public lessons, which will say public at the bottom, are played face up. They affect everyone. Private lessons are played face down. They affect just you. Uh, and then you have anytime cards, which are very powerful. You can hang on to them round and round. Um, and basically, you can use them whenever it's applicable. Um, and if the multiple people want to play anytime cards at the same time, uh, you basically, you just do them in player order. So whoever's at top of the player chain will get theirs first, and then the other person. And then you have treasure cards. Treasure cards will sometimes let you take the rare treasures, which these, again, come out of the bag. They're gold. It might be hard to see in my lighting, but they are gold, where the common treasures are copper. They'll let you take rare treasures or common treasures. Again, common treasures have no value, but they're good fillers. Rare treasures are worth three points at the end, and sometimes they can be good fillers, too. Um, some treasure cards will give you an option of paying to get better treasures, like this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Unless you take any two small treasures, so this one or two, or pay one fish and take any two of the four types of common treasures. Now, common treasures are limited for player count. When they're done, they're done. There aren't any more. Rare treasures are just random. You pull them out of the bag when you're filling the board, um, and then they'll go off to the side. They don't count towards what you pull out of the bag to fill the board up. Now, you might be wondering, how do I make the decision to draft? Well, the board's always going to fill up first, and you're going to see what's going to be available for that round. It's usually, for the standard game, two cats per player on each of the fields. One field, the cats cost five fish. The other field, the cats cost three fish. The way that we explained this when we were playing was that the three fish, they're like closer to the beach, they're closer to the boat, they're easier to nab. Whereas the five fish are further in the island, it's more of a trek. Maybe they're just harder cats to capture. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold today. Now, so when you go to grab a, a cat, you have to pay the fish that's on the board. You also have to have a basket to use, whether that's a basket from cards or a permanent basket for each cat. So when you're drafting, you're thinking about both, you know, are these bonuses any good for me with what's here now or with what I may already have on my ship? And also, you're trying to draft treasure cards or rescue cards so that you might be able to actually get a couple of cats and, and work together with that, right? So for a round, you're going to do your drafting. Once you've done your drafting and you've paid for your cards, so maybe I would keep 
this one because I see there's two purple cats out, right? And this is nine points if I have exactly five purple cats on my boat. May I keep that card? Um, maybe I'll keep this anytime card. Maybe I'll keep the two rescue cards. So my value of my cards is two, four, five, six. I would pay six fish, get four back. And then I would have 14 fish, but only one basket to capture a cat this turn. That's not a great hand, but you can kind of get an idea of how the mechanism works. You do that for a total of five rounds, and every turn you're doing the same order or sequence. You're filling the fields, everyone's getting fish, then you're uh, doing your drafting, you're going through and reading your lessons, which is playing your lessons face up or face down, you're rescuing cats, one cat per player in turn order going around until everyone has had a chance to rescue all the cats they want to or can. And then you're doing your treasures and getting any Oshaks. Oshaks is the last card I have not talked about. These guys are an expensive card. They almost always cost like five or six fish. But what they are is they're a wild card cat. They're white. And when you play them out, you use a little meeple and you delineate what color of cat they're going to be. So like maybe if I already have an orange family on my boat and I'm gonna play this Oshax in that space, then I put an orange meeple on there and say, he's an orange cat. So he's basically a wild card cat. It's a super handy thing to be able to get. They are also limited for the game. You only play with six ever each game so that you can kind of rotate those out. So I know that was very, very fast, but for me, um, I really like the game. I think that it's it's very easy to, to play. The scoring at the end is pretty simple. You score for all your cat families. You score for your minuses for rats and minuses for not filling all of the rooms. You score for any public or private lessons. You score for treasures. It lasts game for over five done. rounds. It's a very fun little game. Um, the family mode is light. It's, it's really, it's crunchy, but not too much so. We played it with my 10-year-old daughter. She loved it. She did not like the fact that cats that aren't taken disappear at the end of the round and basically stay on the island. So in the family mode, she was grabbing every cat, even if it didn't make sense on her boat, just because she didn't want them to die. But we had a lot of fun with that. Um, the more strategic version, the standard mode, is really great for your game group at the local game store. Um, with that, uh, you basically have the chance to add in some extra mechanisms and there's a lot going on, but it's all very streamlined and all flows together very well. Frank did a great job with this game. I really love it. The artwork is fantastic. If you get a chance to check it out. The Isle of Cats is a, a great game. Um, it's definitely worth grabbing, both for the family mode and the standard mode. I hope you enjoyed watching today. I'm going to try to do more run-throughs here soon. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Keep on gaming.